Is America having a crisis of masculinity? Or is Senator Josh Hawley of Missouri having a crisis of masculinity? Like all of us, ideas of masculinity are evolving. Today, you may get a deserved side eye if you say things that used to be commonplace, like real men don't cry or boys will be boys. Waves of feminist critique and the Me Too movement uh, have called out behavior that used to enjoy impunity and now faces greater demands for accountability. Today, the view that you're only a real man if you're dominant or aggressive is thankfully on the defensive. And thank God for that. It's a view that celebrates destructive and toxic behavior and hurts so many, and not just women. The phrase toxic masculinity might once have been reserved for the fringes of the national conversation, but increasingly in schools and workplaces and on media outlets like this one, it is a conversation we are having together. And this week, Senator Hawley decided that what this conversation needed was, well, him. Here he is on Axios, where he pulled off the feet of mansplaining masculinity to a man. Why masculinity as your new big issue? Well, I think what the left is doing is attacking America. They're saying that America is systemically oppressive and men are systemically responsible. What's a man to you? Paint a picture. What's a man? Well, a man is a father, a man is a husband, a man is somebody who takes responsibility. Well, that was buttoned up pretty neatly. But let's pause here for a second. He said out loud that you have to be a husband and a father to be a man? Hawley's definition of man would appear to exclude the nearly half of men who are not married and the nearly 40% who are not fathers, according to the recent census. Sorry, dudes. I guess the tens of millions of men who, for whatever reason, don't have children or wives or husbands, I guess they're not men, according to noted man Josh Hawley. As conservatives, we've got to call men back to responsibility. We've got to say that spending your time not working, and we have more and more men who are not working, spending your time on video games, spending your time watching porn online while doing nothing is not good for you, your family, or this country. So a viewer's watching this, and they're thinking, really, what the liberals are doing are going to push me to watch Pornhub more or play Donkey Kong more? Do you mean that literally? Well, what I mean literally is that I think the liberal attack, the left-wing attack, on manhood says to men, you're part of the problem. It says that your, your masculinity is inherently problematic. It's inherently oppressive. Is he blaming the left for fighting against rape culture, bullying, oppression, and toxic masculinity and suggesting that fighting these things is driving men to Minecraft, Fortnite, and Pornhub? And where was this research conducted? His own home? What's your basis for licking that to what liberals or the left, as you would say, do? Is that based on data or based on a hunch? Well, it's policy over many years. I mean, if you look at the policy of deindustrialization, those are policy choices Mike pursued over many years. I've looked wait, wait, how does that connect to porn? Oh, well, you've got, you've got men, 16 million men, Mike, who are idle, who don't have anything to do. Now, partly that's their own responsibility, but also partly it's because jobs have dried up in many cities across America and rural areas, too. I think you put together lack of jobs, you put together fatherlessness, you put together the social messages that we teach our kids in school. I think we've got to confront that and its effects. Oh, now we get it. An idle mind is the devil's workshop. And in this case, the devils are liberals who are causing red-blooded American men to wither away behind educated women and page 15 on Pornhub. Why didn't you just leave with that? So let's talk about uh, this so-called revival of manhood in America. Here to discuss is co-host of the Man Enough podcast and author of For the Love of Men, From Toxic to a more mindful masculinity, Liz Plank. Also here is Brittany Cooper, Professor of Africana and Women's Studies at Rutgers University. Thank you both for joining us. Uh, I'm sorry under these circumstances. Liz, you've <laughs> written about this. What was your initial reaction to Senator Hawley's comments? And does he have a point at all? Oh my gosh. I, it would take us the full hour to unpack uh, all of this, but but I will try and, and, and make it very brief. So, I mean, one of my favorite things about this whole ordeal is that Josh um, Hawley it, it clearly doesn't support men watching porn stars, but he is okay with the men who bribe them, uh, as we remember with Stormy Daniels uh, and, and, and Donald Trump. Sorry for people who have blacked out uh, 2016 as a coping mechanism. I totally get it. I'm sorry. I, I made you go back there. Uh, but, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of <laughs> inconsistency there. And I don't know, I just see this whole 
bring back masculinity kind of tour that he's on as a as a pretty big thirst trap uh, for for male voters. And I think for many of us, it might be surprising. Like, why would he be so on the nose, right? Right? Why would he be so not subtle when he's uh, going after male voters so, so in, in in such a clear way? But if you actually look at the the data, right? In 2016, men, and particularly white men, uh, were the reason why Donald Trump uh, won the election. But in 2020, white men uh, are, are the reason that he lost. And so this isn't just according to exit polls that we had um, in, in 2020, but even according to Trump's own pollster that looked at 10 key states, five of them uh, uh, you know, had flipped from uh, a Republican to now uh, Joe Biden. And what we really saw is that the biggest erosion when it come, when it came to any demographic of voters, the biggest erosion for Donald Trump and for Republicans in general was white male voters. And so what we're seeing, I believe, is them really going hard for them. And I think this is only the beginning. I think it's going to get um, a lot more on the nose. Um, professor, I want to ask you, you know, when, you, when we talk about um, this notion of a revival of manhood that the center is calling for. I actually think a lot of people on a lot of sides of this issue, maybe all of us in this discussion and the senator, would agree that there's a crisis of masculinity of a certain kind. The disagreement has to do with, is the problem uh, the fight against systemic oppression, or is the problem the systemic oppression? I mean, look, the comments are rolling dumpster fire, and I don't even know where to begin. Um, but let me say a couple of things. One of the reasons, let's not forget that Josh Hawley, that we came to know him well because he was throwing up a fist on January 6th, praising a particular kind of violent white masculinity. Um, and that's actually what he's seeking, what he's dog whistling to and seeking to reinaugurate. And that kind of masculinity that's about an entitlement to a certain kind of tradition, making more money, being the man of the house, being a patriarch, that is what he's trying to reinstall. Now, I think he doesn't have his narrative exactly right because he also sounds weirdly like liberals in the 1960s. If he wants to know how this social experiment is going to work, let us look no further than the 1965 Moynihan Report where a liberal, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, writes a report and says that black men are being pushed out of society because they are not the patriarchs of their households, they do not run anything because they do not have jobs, and that what liberals need to do is to create an economy so that black men can go to work. And if they can go to work, then black families will look traditional and then they can assimilate. Many years ago, I had an advisor who said to me, as black people go, so goes America. And it typically is like a 50-year sort of difference, right? So now we're in a moment where he's literally talking about white men and saying that they're playing video games and watching porn and not participating. And I'm like, oh, but wasn't this the walking billboard for how we talked about black masculinity for like the last 50 years? So it's not clear to me what Josh Hawley hopes to accomplish here, right? But what I do think is clear is that whether liberals are touting this line or, or conservatives are touting the line, the reinstallation of traditional masculinity never actually works out as a set of policy proposals. And so we should be having a broader conversation about how you share the labor and how men can think about how they're suffering under the continual pressure to provide. It doesn't, it's not a compelling narrative. It's not going to work out. Um, Liz, I wanted to ask you, your book is called For the Love of Men, and that's a meaningful, meaningful title because you are critical of this crisis of masculinity, of, of an unreformed masculinity that's still a big part of our society. Um, but you write out in a spirit of love, wanting people to be better, but you also describe a country, and it's important to say this, where a lot of men have changed. We, we have actually successfully migrated a pretty significant number of men to the other side of some kind of line where the number of Don Drapers has been you know, drastically reduced, not eliminated, but drastically mm -hmm. reduced. Can you talk about, forget Josh Hawley, your analysis of what we have succeeded in doing with shifting masculinity and what the work that remains is? Such a great question. Uh, I, and I agree with you, right? We have less uh, Don Drapers. And I think the most meaningful part of that is that the Don, that the men have realized that being Don Draper wasn't just kind of bad for for, for women. Uh, it was kind of bad for them, right? So what I'm really interested in talking about is obviously, uh, you know, all of the ways that the patriarchy and that sexism hurts women. Should I think that most of us can kind of agree, right? That 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 it's pretty bad. But what we have to do a better job of talking about 
um, is the ways that the patriarchy also hurts men. So uh, Dr. Cooper laid out so well uh, a, a lot of it. I mean, even if we think about uh, the January 6th insurrection, 86% of the people who were charged uh, in that um, insurrection were men. Uh, we do have a crisis of loneliness with men, of mental health issues with men. Uh, men are increasingly uh, you know, committing suicide, right, in, in these deaths of despair. And so there are there, there's a lot of male pain. And this is my fear when, when I see people like Josh Harley, uh, Holly, really kind of weaponizing that pain and, and not just weaponizing it, but exploiting it for their own personal gain. You know, the patriarchy is a pyramid scheme, right? It, it actually doesn't benefit most men, it, but it benefits men like Josh Hawley when most men think that it's a system that works for them. Professor uh, Cooper, before I let you go, um, you're a fancy professor. You're familiar with the word projection. I wonder how you think that word may relate uh, to Senator Hawley's uh, disquisitions on the crisis of masculinity. I mean, look, it's totally about him. This is totally his own sort of placing his particular crisis about what kind of masculinity can he project, right? And he's trying to do a couple of different things. Holly wants to run as the more civilized Donald Trump, right? So he wants to dress it up in a kind of civilized, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a respectable man. But at the heart of it is this, this violence. But here's the thing, violence has always been at the heart of patriarchy. Um, and so I agree with Liz wholeheartedly that we've got to deal with the fact that men don't typically have deep friendships with other men and the kind of and, and so what they're doing online doesn't help this sort of incel narrative. All of that stuff is negative, it's violent, and he's absolutely trying to exploit it. Um, and none of us is gonna win by the kind of masculinity he's trying to reinstitute. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.